Okay, everybody, let's check out Tony Fino. And he won a couple of weeks back now on the PGA Tour. So what's special about Tony is he's got quite a short backswing and he generates a lot of club head speed. You know, he's he's much quicker than tour average. So typically he's seven iron on tour. They're going to be swinging about 90 mile an hour. Tony's pretty close to 100. And then driver tour average is about 110, 112. Uh, Tony's about 122, so he's got this pretty cool, unique swing, actually, um, you know, unique setup, and there's a lot of power in there, and I'm going to show you where he's getting that power from, you know, how he's able to generate that amount of club head speed with a short swing, you know, I know there's a lot of you out there with short swings, and you're probably lacking in speed, but a lot of it's down to physics, and I've talked uh, in the past about slingshot, slingshot physics you can check a video out i did on that on youtube and that will help you understand how he's able to generate so much club head speed with such a short backswing so first thing we're going to look at with tony is his setup now if you have a look at all the other 3d videos that i've done you know on garcia Poulter, uh, mcelroy they're all setting up with their spine pretty much vertical at 90 degrees. And what we can see with Tony, and you'll see that clearly when he's playing, is he does tilt back quite a bit. So his spine's tilting away from the target a little bit. So it's tilting more sort of in, in this direction away from it. And we could see with the other players that I looked at on 3D, that wasn't so much the case, that their spine angle tended to be a lot more sort of vertical on the setup. So Tony's pretty pretty unique there he's a little bit different on on his setup there so it's 98.4 degrees tilted away from the target so what we're going to do when we watch him swing back keep an eye on that figure there because what you're going to do is you're going to see it increase a little bit let's just put that in there so you can see exactly where his starting position is so as he takes that club away That number will just go up a little bit. There he goes, 101.2. Okay, so now he's obviously tilting away a little bit more as his hips have, have just moved off centre a little bit on the way back. Now, if we watch from this point onwards, we're going to see that number dropping down, getting back to where he was, round about there. And actually, they're tilting more towards the target, so now he's about 97.2 degrees uh, tilting towards the target so he's gone from his spine tilting away from the target on his setup to then tilting towards the target now you're going to see this a lot more clearly when i just put in his skeleton so this would be his skeleton on his body he's got around about 40 sensors different points on the body on the shoulders the elbow joints, knees, spine, everything. So you can clearly see the spine tilted away on his setup. And then if you just watch it going back, you'll see how it gets more vertical. So he's actually leaning into the target there. You know, you can clearly see that. We can see that from face on there, you know, from where he started. Spine tilting away to then tilting towards the target okay there's that short backswing that i've been talking about so that's the first thing that stands out secondly we're going to look at the pelvis sway so your pelvis is this sort of turntable here you know your left hips attached to it and your right hips attached to it so it's sort of your hips lock into it and then your spine sort of locks into the center of it as well so it's like a turntable your hips are connected to your pelvis so when we look at pelvis sway what we're going to see like a lot of the players i've talked about is when when they go into the backswing they do shift off the ball a little bit in this direction so if we just have a look at this number here it's at zero so the the pelvis is perfectly centered if we take it away we're going to see that number rise a little bit it's going to get just past an inch i think yeah, about an inch, okay? So look where that club is. You know, it's maybe two feet away from the ball. His pelvis has shifted one inch 
this way away from the target that's all just one inch okay now watch what happens to that number as he continues to the top of the swing you're going to see that number reducing now okay so he's halfway into his back swing and he's down to 0 0.4 so he's almost back to where he started and he's only halfway back so what we're seeing here is as he's taking the club to the top of the swing we're actually seeing his pelvis starting to shift towards the target not away from it keep watching that number we're going to see as he takes it to the top reducing even more this is the point where the spine angle is now starting to go from tilting away from the target in this direction here to now sort of straightening up and tilting a little bit towards the target in this direction here that's what we're seeing going on let's continue to the top so as he gets to the top before he transitions we can see he's now his pelvis is shifted forward slightly of his original starting position so that's before he transitions so what I find with all of the players is before they transition they're always slightly further forward with their pelvis than they were at the start that's one of the the most common things I'm seeing with this this system gears 3d okay so as he's pulling that club down and um, he keeps pushing his pelvis forward you can see it's got up to an inch further forward now as he's pulling the club down into the downswing so you can see that number continuing it keeps pushing forwards right the way into the finish okay so where is all that speed coming from you know we, we know he's got he's got a short swing there he's using his spine like a counterbalance I call it a counterbalance and I did a blog on that a while back as well you can check that out on my website but basically as he swings the club back so his spine tilts away from the target and then towards it on the way back now as he swings through if we look at this number here what we're going to see is this number will start to increase so his spine angle as he as he's slingshot in the club he's backing up so we can see that backing up to 106 degrees there so he's as the arms and club are thrusting through to the target the spine angles backing up so it's a bit like a counterbalance so as he goes through the arms get propelled through into the finish there so it's a pretty unique swing like I said there's a lot of club head speed there it's a bit of a unique setup um, but you know you can definitely see the spine angle there what it's actually doing in the swing it doesn't stay tilted away does it it's quite the opposite you know it, it comes back to being a hell of a lot more vertical and then if you look at my Garcia video I did in 3d you know it's Garcia is tilting much more towards the target at the top of his swing he's not tilting away from it and then as he's pulling on the club pulling the club down that's what they do they're pulling the handle of the club down in the direction of the ball so here we are this is the final part of the swing which is going to be downswing and follow through obviously now we're in the perfect position up top from here two important things to, that you have to remember one of them is going to be the beginning of the downswing it's important to pull down with the club it's important that you do it with your arms not with your body if we look from behind the line when i talk about pulling the golf club down into the into the downswing i'm not saying what i want you to do is pull it in the direction of the ground so i'm not saying you're pulling the club down vertically but you're actually pulling it more down into the direction of where where the ball is so you imagine you're trying to pull the handle down towards the golf ball there that would be the best sort of visualization you want to try and get so you can see his hands sort of following that arrow there so he's not pulling them down vertically definitely don't want you to be getting that type of feeling where you're going straight down but you're pulling down in the, the direction of where the golf ball is the other really important part to look at in the golf swing is, is your shoulders and the angle your shoulders turn at in relation to your ground now I've been coaching for many years now and 
a lot of my students would always turn their shoulders to to level with the ground too flat rather than down or steep so when you look at Tony's shoulders as he swings back we can clearly see how the left shoulder it's really pointing down to the ground on the way back and then the right shoulder works back up behind the head there so th this shoulder turn is, is very steep and what that's going to do is going to help you stay centered in your swing so that's going to improve your your ball striking you're going to be more consistent when you strike the ball and it's also going to give you the correct spine tilt throughout the swing as well so basically when you swing back your spine is going to be able to tilt towards the target a little bit which is what you can see all these top players are actually doing especially Garcia you know if you go and look at my Garcia video you know, his spine tilts quite a lot towards the target in his backswing and then as he pushes his hip forward his spine tilts back the opposite way and that creates a slingshot so if you want to look at shallow in your downswing you know you need to look at that Garcia video that I did because he shallows his downswing more than any other tour player anybody that I know of anyway so you can pick up a lot of good points from there if, you, if you're coming over the top. So that's a, a few points there on Tony's swing. Um, you know, definitely some stuff you can implement into your game there. I recommend checking out my steps videos on my YouTube channel. I did um, a 3D analysis of Rory McIlroy and also using a G4 swing trainer and how that can help you identify swing flaws in your own swing and how to correct them. There's plenty of drills in there and you know advice on how to use a swing trainer so go and check those videos out and i'll catch up with you soon thanks for watching